Let's pray. Father, uh, I need your help here today. I need you to speak. Um, Lord, make it clearly. I pray in the authority of Jesus Christ that you will bind the evil one. So many, he tries to disturb so many services. Lord, we pray that your spirit will flow. Lord, I pray your spirit will fill. Fill, spirit, fill. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll come and you'll open our ears to your voice. To the Lord, you speak. Open our hearts. Lord, give us what we need this morning to be moved. Lord, there is a mercy seat, a pen and a form at the front to come to pray. And we just pray you'll call your people to come, to bring, to take our lives, Lord, all for you. Lord, hear, hear this prayer. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll protect these next few moments. I pray you'll come and your will be done in the next few moments. This is the, the pinnacle of the service, Lord, right here, Lord, when we speak about what's going on inside of our hearts and our minds. And so, Lord, we give it to you. Lord, use this. And uh, thank you, Lord, for the great news of the gospel. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. My prayer this morning is that you have a little sheet. We have a sheet uh, a little fill-in sheet for you, just to continue to uh, keep you and myself on track. If you don't have the sheet, you can just raise your hand. There's uh, the gentlemen are coming around. Just want to make sure you have that. I don't know uh, what type of uh, idea you think of when you think of faith. I know some stories throughout life about faith. I know one time I got on a plane leaving a yellow knife. And we crossed the, the tarmac, uh, we're crossing the tarmac, and we see the plane we're going to get in. And the door that we're supposed to get in was sort of hanging down a bit. It wasn't quite as solid as it should be. And the plane looked like it had been around to both North and South Pole. The plane had been around, and, you know, just by faith, I climbed up onto this plane. And uh, I got on there with uh, 25 hunters. It's a long story, I won't get into it, but they had knives, they had guns, <laughs> they, they had, it was such a, a strange, and there was even a bear dog, a dog that uh, lets you know that there's a bear in the area. And so here we get on this plane, guns, knives, fishing rods, dogs, and the plane was dilapidated, like the plane was old. And I tell you, when we landed, uh, where, we were, where we were going, we landed, that door flung open. It was just wide open on the runway. It was a, yeah, that was like a stupid kind of faith, right? <laughs> Have you ever been driving your car and you're low on petrol? And what do you say? I'm running on faith. And, uh, but my mother would say, no, you're running on stupidity is what you're running on. <laughs> I was r driving between Alberta and British Columbia, and my gas needle was way down. I thought, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I could. Next thing I know, I'm on the side of the highway waiting for help because I had more road than I had gas, petrol. The, the final little story I'll tell you about faith is uh, a friend of mine, his name was Brian Figueroa, was going home to see his sister. And his sister had gotten a dog, and he hadn't visited his sister in about two years. And she just kept on saying to Brian, it's a friendly dog. It's a friendly dog. Just let yourself in. Call his name. You'll be fine. Well, when Brian opened the door, he called the dog whose name was King. You always have to watch a dog with the name's King. He called out King, and he went into the house. King was a Doberman. And this two-year-old Doberman was not having Brian in the house. And Brian just was attacked by the dog, but he got himself into a closet. And he had to stay there for four hours. 
And that dog worked for four hours on that door trying to get into him. <laughs> and they had to replace that door. But he said to his sister, you know, I trusted you. <laughs> you said, oh, the dog, no problem. Just call his name, you said. What kind of faith is this all about? What kind of faith can we have? There's three areas of faith that I want to talk to you about. Uh, three, are, three areas of faith. First of all, there's the positive thinking. Some of you remember Norman Vincent Peale, the power of positive thinking. You know, I never wrote that, read that book, but I've seen portions of it. You know, there's some times when we can be a little more positive in our thinking, don't you think? But the basic premise on that was the lack of faith in God. It's just like the power you have, the faith you have in yourself is what you need the, to be able to think that through. Now, I need you to come with me this morning. Are you with me? You, you okay? So there's the, our, the thought of power, positive thinking. The other one is superstitions. The first day of Chinese New Year, you don't sweep the floor. Why not? Why not? Because you sweep away your fortune. Have you ever walked along the street and someone's doing, cleaning the windows, right? And they're on a ladder. Do you walk underneath the ladder? No, because if you walk under the ladder, you get seven years bad luck. This is what they tell us, right? There's so many superstitions. I played a lot of hockey, and some of the guys on my, my team, they would they would come out on the ice and they would never step on the lines during, during, uh, during the warm-ups. They would always step over the lines on the ice surface. And I'd say, what are you doing? they said, say, oh, no, you, I, I, I never step on the lines. And our goaltender used to come from one end to the ice and he'd step over the lines. It's just a painted line. It was a... superstitious. And then there is faith. Faith in what? Faith in God, faith in God's, faith in God's word. So the art of positive thinking, the art of positive thinking, you're relying on yourself. The, the real juggernaut for a lot of people and an impossible blind spot for many Christians is this idea of superstition. Then you're relying on other people's words. But I tell you here, and I stand here, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other grounds is sinking sand. The art of positive thinking is sinking sand. The, the, the superstitious world, the, the stars in the sky, and the worshiping the, the, the cosmos and worshiping the horoscopes, it's all sinking sand. But on Christ, on his word, you can interchange it. I, Faith in the Lord, faith in, in, in the Scripture. Let me read a verse to you. Uh, Romans 10, 17. Romans, Romans 10, 17. Consequently, faith comes from the hearing of the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Where do we get our faith? Is through the word of Christ. Where do we stand but on the solid rock of Christ? Let's go to our sheet. Let's go to our sheet. The sheet, first of all, says this. Doctrine number eight. Sorry to throw you off back there. I'm, I'm, I'm on track now. Doctrine number eight. I'm going to have to change the words a bit here. I've messed them up a bit, but here it is. Doctrine of the Salvation Army. The beliefs of the Salvation Army is this. We believe that we are justified by grace through what? Through positive thinking. No. Through, through faith. We are justified by grace through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And they that believe have the witness in themselves. I just changed the wording there just a bit, just to make more inclusive. That he that believeth hath the witness in himself. Is sweet. We are justified by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. That's how we are saved. That's how we are forgiven. So we grew up in the church. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming many of you grew up in the church and we are said, we are justified by faith, not by works. Right? So we, um, this is how it comes out. We are justified by, what it means is we are justified by faith, 
not by works. So we can get the idea of justification, but what is faith? If you were to write down a definition of faith, it would be all over the map. The legal term, if you have a giant courtroom, and on the throne is God, God sitting on the throne, and he's sitting there in his beautiful robes, and on the right-hand side of the Father is Jesus Christ, and they're sitting there, and they're saying to you, today, this day, March 17, 2019, Mark Hall, come towards the bench. And I was to walk towards the bench, and God's sitting there. I tell you, my head would be down. Because in the court, God's the judge, and I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I confess to you that I am a sinner. But I'm a sinner saved by his grace. And I stand there. And when he brings down the gala, bang, he brings it down. And he says, Mark Hall, you are, and you're sort of thinking, it's going to be guilty. Death, take him away. He says, Mark Hall, righteous. You're going, righteous? Justified. Justified. Yes, not guilty. How is that? I mean, I wouldn't say that. I just, I just stay still. Right? Wouldn't you just stay still? Because of Jesus Christ, his work on the cross, your sin has been taken away, and it's been buried in the deepest sea, remembered no more. Folks, please come with me this morning. Yes? Remembered no more. And the righteousness that is an alien to me, the righteousness of Christ has been put on me. So when God looks at me, he goes, justified. Yes? We understand that, right? We're justified by faith. But what's this faith? What is this faith? Is it a saving faith? What is this faith? So the couple of questions I want to ask, and I don't want to open too many doors here this morning, not enough time, but what is saving faith? I want to ask you about faith. Justification is a legal term. We can, we can figure that out. But what is saving faith? Church, what is saving faith? What is a living faith? Can I say this to you? We were dealing with a young man at our camp, he came from another church, and he came with great qualifications. And we were so pleased to have him a part of the Salvation Army's camp. And he was just, you know, it was just one of those, we were thrilled to have him. He'd written out on his application a profession of faith. A profession, he, he profession of faith. And then in the interview, he, pro, he, he, he had a profession of faith that came out of his mouth. He said all the right things. He ticked all the right boxes. But let me tell you of a conversation I had with him. There was a few of us who had a meeting with him. We started getting information about this young man. We started hearing some things about this young man that we were very, very concerned about. I won't go into the details. It's not necessary. You just need to know. Some of the details were very serious. We met him in the room, and he sat there, and we said to him, this is, this is what we're understanding, and we just want to make sure it's not true. Just can you explain this? Can you explain that? Just go through down through it. And there was a few of us in the room with him. And he looked at us, and I'll never forget, because he folded his arms like this. And this is what he said. He said, I was baptized, and I was saved when I was 14. And I'll live the hell of a life that I want to. So we were like, oh, <laughs> all right. Well, that's clear. That's clearer than your profession of faith. You see, he believed all the right things. He believed that Jesus died. He believed that Jesus rose again. He believed in justification by faith. He believed all the right things. But what about his faith? What does that mean to the entire body, his mind, his will, his heart, his feet, his hands? Lord, take my hands, my feet.
tell us there must be more than just a bare belief. Our belief, our bare belief, listen to this, James 2. James 2 says on your sheet, but some will say one person has faith, another has actions. My answer is, show me how anyone can have faith without actions. And I will show you my faith by my actions. Do you believe there is only one God? Good. Then he goes on, demons also believe that. What he's saying here is, you can believe the right things. Satan also believes. Do you think that Satan doesn't know about Jesus? Satan knows he exists. Satan knows that he walks this land. Satan knows that he died on the cross and shed his blood. Satan knows that he says, I'm going to make all things new. Satan knows that he rose from the dead. He believes that, but that does not make him have saving faith. Do you have saving faith? Do you? I notice that you're all sharing in the faith here that that chair is going to hold you up. That is great faith. Some of us have great faith in the cars we drive that the brakes are going to work. I remember driving my bike down a hill and my chain fell off the bike. And at the end of the road was traffic. I had faith in that bike and it let me down. What is your faith based on? Is it based on the Word of God? And if so, does that affect your whole body? Do you have a saving faith? Do you have a living faith? I want to go just briefly through the, a bit of the uh, Hebrews 11 with you. Just, just We're going to touch on them. Because I pulled out seven verbs, seven verbs of faith that are found in these verses. And we'll go through them rapidly. Seven verbs of faith. First of all, verse 3. In verse 3 it says, Did you know that God created the heavens and the earth? He, he brought the place in, into being. So first one is faith brings understanding. Faith brings wisdom. Faith brings these things. Uh, so there's a great understanding, a great wisdom. Here's a verse for you to look up later. Psalms 119, 119 verse 97 and onward. Psalm 119 verse 97. It says, I have greater wisdom than some of my teachers. Why? Because when Christ comes into your life and you have faith, it gives you wisdom. Did you know that? It makes you wise. It gives you wisdom and understanding. Verse, verse 4, chapter 11, verse 4. You, came, Abel came and he brought the best animal he had. Cain offered, the word is offer. He offered, Lord, at my, Lord, take, take my life and let it be. Take it. You offer. That's what faith does in you. You offer. You get this great understanding. You have this wisdom that comes through faith. And then you say, Lord, I offer you. There's people that do great commitments. There's a, there's a man that I met, again, up north. When I was up north, it really changed my life. I met this man, uh, a, a white man, that went up to work with the natives. And how many years he spent up there? Fifty. Fifty years. I want you to know they did not welcome him. They did not welcome him. They did not like him. They did not want him there. They, he, he, was, he, he was different. He was, he was odd you know, to, to them. He was, but after a while, the, he started to speak to them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you, he is, he is one of the main leaders in the native community. And he has led to the, dog, the Bible being translated into the dog rib people. Now we sit there and go, yeah, okay, so hallelujah for that. 
He translated the Bible into their language. Folks, hallelujah. God gives us wisdom. In, in verse 3, he gives us wisdom. Verse 4, we, we offer, we come to him in a commitment. We say, Lord, here's my life. I commit it to you. That's what faith does. Because it affects the whole body. Seven, faith builds. Faith builds. God went to Noah and said, build an ark. Did you know they had to have water? Faith builds. Faith builds. Faith has great thoughts. Faith has amazing. Faith thinks, you know, I, I was sitting in a, in a restaurant not too long ago. Okay, it may have been Starbucks. I'm not sure. Listening to two people beside me because they were sitting rather close, and they were and back and forth, and they were talking about someone, just back and forth about somebody. And it sounded absolutely nonsense. And let me tell you, there is a mind that talks when they get together, and they talk about people. There is a greater mind that gets together and talks about things. And then there's a great mind that talks about ideas and possibilities. You know what? I want to have conversations about possibilities and ideas. Don't you? Hello? Uh, if we don't want to talk about this, what, let's talk about breakfast next Sunday. I'm really concerned. Roti prata and curry for breakfast? That's not going to bode well for me. My digestive tract, I won't get into it, but cannot handle that for breakfast. Is that what you want to talk about? You seem to come alive when I talk about that. Faith comes, and great things come out of it. People have visions and dreams, and they talk about concepts. They don't talk about people. They don't run people down. They don't destroy people's character. They just gossip, gossip, gossip. And I want you to know that's part of a sickness that people have that's in the church. And God speaks about it in his word, how you talk about people. It's terrible. Oh, God, give me a mind that I talk about things. And then give me a, a greater understanding and a greater wisdom when I talk about building something. Yes? Thank you. Thank you. Faith. Listen, faith obeys. Faith obeys. Faith says, yes, Lord. Faith obeys. God comes to Abraham. He says, Abraham, let's go for it. You're, 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 you're going you're to leave. He says, well, Lord, where, <laughs> where, where am I going? Just come. So he had to go to Sarah. Uh, Sarah, can you pack your curling iron and, and all your stuff? The Lord's taking us on a journey. She says, what? Well, where are we going? I don't know, but we're just going on a journey. I don't know where we're going. Or why are we going? Because the Lord said so. Because faith is obedient. Faith obeys. Faith. I used to play a solo with the band many years ago, and I knew the music. The music was in my head. And I used to put the songbook on the music stand because I used to follow along the words. <clears throat> and these words are for you today. The song goes like this. And when I cannot see, <clears throat> and when I cannot see, I'll trust. <clears throat> and then I'll know, <clears throat> thou surely must be my All in all. And when I cannot see, Lord, when I, <clears throat> when I cannot see, I tell you, when I was flying here to Singapore, I couldn't see. I just said, <clears throat> Lord, if I'm going to Singapore because you're, 
you're sending me there. I'll go. Because I know <clears throat> that he will lead the way. He will prepare the way. And then he met me here. Because faith is more than bare beliefs. It's more than an empty faith. It's more than just, I believe in God died, he rose again, hallelujah. It's more than bare beliefs. It is a full anatomy of, take my life, Lord. Some of you are going, no, no, no Mark. That's for the radicals. That's for the right. No, it's for us. Verse 8, faith obeys. Verse 16, faith longs. It is forward looking. It is forward looking. It, it longs for, for what's better. And they're saying, they, you look at your city and you go, this is not my city. I long for a great better place. I don't long for Canada. I long for heaven. In heaven will be my mother and my father. In heaven will be my dog. <laughs> In heaven will be Mark Twain, William Booth. Did you know that William Booth, William Booth received a, an honorary doc, doctorate at the same time Mark Twain did. And they show, there was apparently, there was a time when William Booth and Mark Twain were over in the corner having a discussion. I would love to have heard that conversation. Two, two men of faith talking about great ideas. I bet you they weren't saying, you know, that guy that's running this thing is, you know, he doesn't know what he's doing. Look, we're standing out here. We don't know what they're doing. There's no organization. The guy has no plan. He has no vision. Like, oh, this is terrible. I, I, I'm not doing this. Next time they have my, I'm not coming. Does that sound familiar? Is that how you talk? I bet you they were saying, you know what we can do? We can build. We can build something great for God. We can set something in place that will create something great for God. Faith longs and has forward thinking. Do you have forward thinking? My mother always used to say, Mark, in light of eternity, get up and do it. <laughs> My poor mother, I make her out. She was really a lovely person, really. <laughs> you never mess with I was more afraid of my mother than the Lord, but that's beside. That's a whole, that's, I'm still seeing therapists by that. You know, verse 20 says, and he blessed them. You know, what, you know what faith does? Faith brings that you want to bless people. It brings a blessing, yes? Verse 21. Without turning to all of these, you can look up these later. Faith worships. Faith, up, faith worships. Faith worships. The time when my father, I've told you about this, my father was called, he was taken into the hospital, and I got a call at work, Mark, your father's, father's in the, my mother, she says, daddy's in the hospital. I'm here with him. Can you come? So I, yeah, I made my way over there. It was a, a hospital in Toronto with a large, with a, <clears throat> with a large emergency room. And I went in there, and no one seemed to know you know, Keith Hall, didn't know, didn't, didn't know where he was. A lot of curtains, a lot of small little rooms. <clears throat> <clears throat> and all of a sudden, this is what I heard. The joy of... <laughs> <clears throat> the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy is my strength the joy Mr. Music the 
The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Joy. Again. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy. is my strength the joy of the Lord is my strength he gives me living water and he gives me living water and I thirst no more the joy I came around the corner I could hear them singing my mother was singing the alto and I came around the corner. <clears throat> and my father, who was... <clears throat> my father who had been sick for a long time. <clears throat> I remember his skinny little arms. My father was always a big, big man. And I just remember his skinny little arms up in the air. Because that's what faith does. Faith worships. <clears throat> What's the definition of faith? Here's the definition of faith. The definition of faith is confidence in God no matter the circumstances or the consequences, but obedience. Faith is a confidence in God. Have you ever seen that demonstration where you fall back in the person's arms and they have to fall back in blind faith back into the person's arms and you just believe that he's, the person's going to be there and they're going to catch you? The confidence in God is that I have confidence in him no matter the circumstances or the consequences. Yes? Faith is like a tree. Faith is like a living tree bursting forth with fruit. What is the fruit? The fruit is understanding and wisdom. The fruit is offers your life. Uh, the fruit is, it builds, it has great ideas, it, 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 it's great thoughts. The, f the fruit, fruit is, it, it obeys. The, f the fruit is the forward-looking. The faith is, it blesses, it, it blesses. And faith, faith is, is, it, is it worships. Is this your experience? Is that what you experience? Your mind will hands, feet, come and have faith in God that you present it all to him. Yes? Let's go to prayer. I want to sing a song. I want to sing a song. Faith unites us to Christ. Faith, faith brings Christ inside of us. We are in him and he is in us. Does your faith look like that? Is that what you're experiencing? The full anatomy of faith. Or do you rely on the bare belief? Because James says, Satan believes that. Satan believes that. Just with every head bowed, every eye closed. I love to say to people, if you, if you want prayer, if you want a deeper experience with Christ, I pray you raise your hand. I, 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 I'm going to say that in a moment, I, but I want to also say the place of prayer is available. The place of prayer is available. The Salvation Army, we love our mercy seat, our penitent form. This is how we were formed. But let's start with just, with no one looking around, please, just a, 
No movement. Powerful moment here. Just a raise of hand. Say, Mark, please pray for me. I, I want a deeper faith. Yes, 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 I see you. I see you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I see your hands. In my life, Lord, be glorified. Be glorified. Yes. In my life, Lord, be glorified today. Lord God, we pray at this moment, this powerful moment, Lord, be glorified in our life. Lord, as we walk around, may we have living faith in the hawkers, in the, in the J8, and on the MRT. Lord, may we have a saving faith that we wear, that we wear Jesus Christ. We, 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 are, we are wise, Lord, wisdom, and we offer our life a living sacrifice. Lord, we, we build we obey, we look forward, we bless, we worship, Lord. We pray that our lives will be glor glorify you in Singapore today. Lord, continue to use Singapore Central Core. Lord, I pray with my, my brothers and sisters, Lord, increase my faith. Lord, increase my faith. And I also pray, Lord, increase our faith. Because, Lord, you want to do great things. You want to do great things through the Salvation Army here in Bijan. I know you do, Lord. You want to do great things throughout this territory. Lord, so come. Come and bring a saving faith to us, a, a living faith, a, a faith reality. Lord, come today. Amen. Will you stand? I would just like you to sing. You sing this, uh, take my life and let it be one more time.